They told us to give a disclaimer. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the podcasters, any guests, and do not reflect any of the management, owners, sponsorships, or employees of thereof. Pretty much, if you're soft, don't listen to this podcast. Um, one thing I pride myself on is just being the same and, and trying to look out for my folks along the way. Like, even with all these, you know, big things happening, like, you still mad humble and you still, like, you have enough clout now where you could easily be like, I'm not fucking with this. I'm not fucking with that. Oh, yeah, motherfuckers. It's on. Unrestricted podcast listeners, thank you so much for clicking play because of you. Those numbers are going up, up, and up, especially on YouTube. The YouTube numbers are phenomenal. Man, our subscriber, it's hard to get subscribers on YouTube. And for me to, we're almost at 1,300. So we're moving. We're moving numbers. So thank you so much for clicking play. Today, I got a very special guest on the other side of me, a woman that at the time when we first met, we were kids. Yeah. And now you're a woman. You're, you're uh, military. Mm-hmm. You're, you're opening your own business. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I should say the last name, but I got Bree here with me. <laughs> now, Bree... I, I reached out to you and I was like, hey, come on the pod. And you were late. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's how we start. Uh, no, I'm just playing. But um, you, you've you been doing some phenomenal things. You know, we follow each other on social media and I see some of the stuff that you do. You're not, you've most recently been more active on social media, but for a while there, you, you were kind of dark on social media. Yeah. So I want to catch up. Let's, let's, uh, one, what made you get into the military? Because when we were younger, you weren't even talking about military. <laughs> There's nothing about you that said, hey, I'm going into the military. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, when I was in high school, I think a uh, deep side of me always knew I wanted to. Um, I mentioned it one time to my mom, and it was laughed off. I don't, she did not remember that at all, but I remember it. And I just, sometimes the way you grow up, you, your thinking isn't what it should be. And I just was... I remember thinking, oh, that's something I could never do, or that wasn't meant for me, or that's not the life for me. But I, I knew inside I kind of wanted to. Mm. And then I got married to somebody in the military, and I think that that shed a lot more light on the life he was living, and I was like, damn, that could have been my life. Mm-hmm. And I think that maybe a little bit of envious came because he was living a life that I kind of wanted to live. But... um Maybe we got married for that purpose, like, because obviously we got divorced and didn't last, and that was a whole other story in itself, but at the end of um, of our separation, I had told him I wanted to join the military, and he was very supportive. Being married already, you have to get your spouse's signature, and he was like, yeah, I support you, and he was like, I think you would do very good in it. Hold on. You have to get your spouse's signature to join the military? <laughs> yes. So if... if- if you're married to somebody and they're already in the military, mm-hmm. you have to get their approval? Yes. Whoa, I didn't know that. It was a shock to me, too. Is it the other way around? If you were the one, would you? Would he need your signature? Or is this a man-woman thing? I think it's a military thing. Oh, okay. So I think it would have been the same. Gotcha. But um, So he signed off, and he, he was very supportive, actually. He was like, I think you'd do very well. And and then I went. I I just in two months of talking about it, and then I left. And how does it, what's the process? Do you go down to the recruiting center? Or? Yeah, so you go down, and then you'll take an ASVAB, which is a placement test, and then from there you get placed. Is that physical or not yet? So you'll okay. do it's it's knowledge. So like writing, reading, you do like the puzzles and the mathematics and all the stuff, and then based on your your score, you'll get placement of jobs available to you. And then, so obviously, the higher you score, the better jobs you can get. The lower, the not so great jobs you get, and then you can select your. They call it a rate. You'll pick your rate, and that'll be your job in the military. And then from there, you'll um, do like a bunch of screenings, medical screenings, to make sure you're fit and able. And then if you pass that, then you'll go to boot camp. And then from there, that's more of your physical test. You have to pass some some things, and then. And then from there you go to school, and then from school you go out to the fleet and do your job. At what point do you do you choose what branch you want to go to? Yes. So what branch did you choose? I I believe that I should have been in the Marines. I'm way too physical to not be there. Um, but at, they're they're the most strict on your tattoo policies. So at the time, five and years. You are tatty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, at the time, I didn't have that many, but I think the rule was you could only. You can only cover it with your hand. So if you can't cover it with your hand, then you need a waiver. And I think I mine exceeded the hand palm thing. 
And then they were like, well, we can get you out maybe in a year. You have to get a waiver, and even then it's not guaranteed to be approved. And mind you, I was like getting ready to go through a divorce. I'm like, I, I need to go now. Like, mm-hmm. I can't wait a year. Yeah. I just went next door to the to the Navy office. <laughs> I'm like, we'll get you in two months. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> you want to get a tattoo on your way out? <laughs> and they're like, you can get tattoos on your hands. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then I did. <laughs> so, yeah. So the, the that whole thing, because you always hear like these these um I don't want to say urban legends or urban myths, but about the military about you can't join if you're flat footed. Is that true? That's true. Whoa, <laughs> that is very true. What are some like other quirky things that can kind of keep you from being in the military? Mm, off the top of my head, I can't think. There's so many random ones. They colorblind. That's a real thing. Well, you yeah. okay? I, but, there's certain jobs that you do you cannot get if you're colorblind, but you're it it takes away a lot. Wow. Um, I always here for the Air Force. You you have to be a certain height to okay. be a fighter pli- pilot. Weight and height yeah. requirements. So there's a girl shorter. There's not many people shorter than me, <laughs> but there was a girl shorter than me, and she had to get a a waiver. Like they they it goes all the way up like to see if she'd be if they're willing to work with her for being so little. What was a uh, what was boot camp like? Oh my gosh! For the Navy, it was so. Huh, if you're military, don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fun. L- looking back now, it was a lot of fun, and I I would love to do it again. Uh, at the time, it was very very hard for me. I think it depend. I think it's hard regardless because they they break you down to build you back up. That's what they say. Mm. Uh, but at the time for me, it wasn't physically physically hard because I was pretty in shape. But a lot of people struggle physically because they're not in shape. I've seen some people uh, transform their bodies incredibly, and I think that's really awesome. For me, I think it was a mental thing. I think I was, um, I think I wasn't very strong mentally that year, especially well, like with the divorce and stuff. That's what I was about to ask you. Like mentally, how yeah. how were you? Like going through this whole process, you you know you're going through a big transition in your life, going through divorce. <laughs> It was hard, but it was so needed, and I I joined to better my life. I but I I benefited it. I benefited in ways that I didn't think that I that I knew I would. So going like I just I became a person that I didn't even know I became. I never knew when I became so like weak and just unhappy. And if I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not taking care of others. So I I definitely played my part in the divorce. And then going through boot camp, I went in there weak, and it just. By the time I got out, I was like, damn, I can do anything. I felt like Superwoman. Mm-hmm. Like, mentally, I was like, "I there's nothing I can't do. Did you break during boot camp? Yes, when uh, you, uh, you're you allowed one phone call. And when I called and I heard my mom's voice, oh, my God, I just, everybody's crying. Everyone's crying all around you. I definitely cried. And then she threw away with my kids. Uh, my first letter when I from my kids broke me down. What did you say? What, what did I say on the phone call or in the no, on the letter? <laughs> I specifically on my first letter to my mom was, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> I can't do this. I just want to quit. This is hard. I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know it was like this. I was just crying. <laughs> and it was hard. It was, it was very hard. But it was so necessary. I needed that to be able to have, honestly, just to be able to have the opportunity. Because I joined, I joined older. I joined late. So to have the opportunity to be able to rebuild myself and put myself through such, they were like, just to be, be rebuilt, just mm. to be like, you don't have to be weak. You can change your life. You can make better choices. You can be different. Yeah. It was like an opportunity for me to be a different person. And it, that was not what I went in for, mm. but that's what I got out of it. And just coming out, I was such a stronger person mentally. And I could never, I don't know how else I would have done that. I don't know how I what tools I would have used. I'm sure something would have came up, but I don't know what it would have been. How old were your babies when you left? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they were like pretty young though. Yeah, well, probably like one, three, and four, maybe. Oh my gosh, they were little, and I got a lot of lashback for that too. From what? For from family or uh, family friends? See, apparently, it's it's very frowned upon to be a woman and leave your kids and how dare you and how can you do that and that's hard and how are you gonna be a mom well the cool thing is is that they're not you right yeah like they a lot of people have a lot of things to say about your situation the way you move Mm -hmm. 
but they're not you. Like there's things that you do, even starting this business, you're going to have people and we're going to talk about the business that you're, you're starting up. Um, there's going to be people that doubt you. There's going to be people that say, Oh, you're doing that. Or who are you to do that? You're right. Yeah. And all you gotta do is just keep following the path, like follow the path that you know that you want to be in. Right. You know, like the military. Cause if it was a guy, it would be no different. Like, I mean, it would be very different. Like a, a guy, a, a dad going out would be applauded and patted on the back for doing something so courageous and following that path. But then like when a woman does it, I, I did, I really got a lot of, I got a lot for that. So how do you push through and not listen to those people? Because I knew they didn't feel how I felt. Mm. And I knew that, honestly, you're going to have, everybody's going to have an opinion. If I didn't do anything, they're going to have an opinion because I didn't do anything. Just, everyone has opinion about something. Mm -hmm. It just matters. Actually, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just you literally just have to drown the voices out and only listen to the people. I only listen to a few people. There's only a few people that I really ask advice for. And if it's somebody I want to be like, somebody I really look up to, or somebody I deeply trust that I know will not want to see me go down a bad path. I, I want to ask this question, and you don't have to answer it if you don't want to, um, but how are women treated inside the military? Oh, that's a whole other... It's so bad. It is so, so bad. Um, it's bad on many, many levels, many reasons. There's so many things, but okay. This isn't an accurate... This isn't accurate numbers, but just to give an idea, for every 100 men, there's maybe one girl. Mm. So you're outnumbered by far. And then even within the, that, being such a small number, you're already divided up because the work, you probably, if there's a girl next to me, she probably has a different job. Girl next to me on this side probably has a different job. So we're already divided. And the, even then, age, like age range, like, okay, so... Because I joined late, the girls who come in are usually like 18, mm -hmm. right out of high school. But if you're like a leader, you can't really be their friend because they have this, they, for fraternization. So you can't really be your boss's friend type of thing. Yeah. So people that I would be friends with, like, you really can't because they're either your chief or like a lieutenant or someone who is not, it's just fraternization, you're not able to. So then it limits it even more. And then so you just. So how do you bond? <sighs> With you, the girls, yeah. Um, you you seek each other out because there's not that many of you, so you're gonna you're gonna bond and maybe you don't bond. <laughs> there's it's just it's so hard. It it's I honestly don't even have words for it because I haven't processed that entirely yet. It's there's a lot of um, and not for me, but I have witnessed there's a lot of sexual assault, tons. Um, because I actually think about the yeah. thing, Gabriella, mm -hmm. her story um, in Texas about how she was murdered and um, nothing was even done about it. You know, it was kind of like brushed under the rug. And then from her story, you heard more women's stories about sexual assault, mm -hmm. about them going to their their higher ups and it being going nowhere and there being no, you know, um, nothing done about it. So I always wondered the how the women in the military, one, are treated and if there's anything being done about it. So they're treated. It's hard to say how they're treated because everybody has a different opinion on it. So if a, if a female is getting treated great, there's always somebody going to be like, oh, it's because she's doing something under the table for him. Mm. And because, uh, you know, guys just can't be nice to girls without there being another reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So or um, sometimes there are girls like, OK, I'm a hard worker. I am a very hard worker and I've definitely earned everything and how far I've come in the Navy. I've advanced pretty quickly. And I mean, th it's a joke. It's just a known joke. And I don't take it personal because I stopped doing that. But this is a known joke of, oh, oh, you got that far because of because you're doing this or because you're doing that mm. or but like I can I can take a joke but there's a lot of people in there who can't take a joke and they like that affects them mentally and they think that they advance just because because of other reasons and that, that can be really demeaning on somebody like you're mm -hmm. only saying that I'm advancing because because I'm a pretty girl and so that can be really rough so then it's hard or then like if a girl works really hard then there's other people who are like oh you're just working hard because you um they just classify girls as having like 
a bad attitude or you just you think you're better than everybody or or they'll be like, oh, you're just masculine. You're trying to be more than the guys. And like, it's just hard. Like, no matter how a girl moves, there's always somebody has something to say. What was your job? I'm a logistics specialist. Um, there's so much that goes into that. But uh, so in my first job, I was on an aviation platform. So uh, it was F-18s. It was a squadron. And it's where they train the pilots to go out to the fleet. It was really awesome. Um, my job particularly, I did a lot of financial stuff. Um ordering parts for the the jet um in a nutshell that's that's what i did there and then i got over to a ship which is a carrier really awesome um thought i'd hate it ended up loving it you know what's funny about that and maybe this is me being naive um, but i always thought the aircraft carrier carriers were the air force but that's navy so it's really cool so navy is the only one that has air land and sea so we have aviation or we yeah we have the air it's just like an air land and sea mm. uh a, a uh air force is just air yeah I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. so yeah navy's the only one that has all three which is pretty cool wow so you get on the ship what was your first experience like when you're on the carrier oh so sad well i had been on underways before with my previous command the the jets would go and do training on a, a ship mm. and then so we'd have to spend some time out at sea for that so I had been on a ship enough to know that I never wanted to go. <laughs> so when you got the call that you're going to be going on a ship, you're like, damn. I cried. Oh. I cried. Because you're out there for months, right? <coughs> Weeks. Yeah, depending on where your where your ship is at. So the ships go through rotation because um, they're defending our waters. So the, mm-hmm. some people are out, some people are in, and they'll just rotate, rotate out. So depending on where you're at, um, we'll de- decide your sea time. Did you ever go on the deck like at night? Oh yeah, all the time. How was that? What kind of stuff did you see? Now, obviously, it's the sea, so it's pitch black, probably <laughs> just water. But did you ever see anything like? So it's really cool. So I had friends who had a call and a call flight deck fam. So my job doesn't require me on the flight deck, but when I'm up there, they'll take you up there and they literally they'll just launch the aircraft off of the carrier. And the first time I ever seen it, it was going and going, and I thought it was it's not very big, and I just thought it was going to go right into the water so it goes in and goes and it kind of dips down and then it comes right back up and it's the coolest thing but when you're there the speed like i under like i understand how like people can die and get really like it's a dangerous job but it is probably the coolest thing i've ever seen like seen what about the stars did you see a lot of stars yeah it's incredible yeah it's it's just like like you would imagine bright stars in a dark sky and then just when your eyes adjust, you can see the different levels of, like, darkness. And so just see, like, the darkness where the sky meets the water, and it's just endless. And you're like, I could really die out here. <laughs> Did you get used to the movement? Do you even feel the waves? Um, yeah, I never had a problem with seasickness. Mm. Uh, actually, the stabilizers are pretty, pretty good. You almost... Unless the swells are really big, like sometimes you'll feel it rock, but actually most people really like that. You get like the best sleep. You're just like being rocked to sleep. <laughs> it's 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 actually really nice. Have you ever been in a submarine? No, I've seen one. You don't see them often. Yeah. You, you, you'll never see them. <laughs> no, I've never been. I've had friends who have been on them and they told me really cool stories, but no, I'm very thankful. There's like, no, I don't ever want to go on a sub. Those people go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 started the military you've been doing your job how long were you active duty so i did five years active duty and then i got i got out because my kids really i promised them i didn't want to get out and i promised them and i told them i asked them i was like do you care if i stay and they're heartbroken and they cried and i was like okay okay i gotta get out so then i'm like oh, i'll just do the reserves so then i came back here i joined the reserves so the day my contract ended I just was reserves very next day. Mm. But actually, I just submitted a package for, it's called Definite Recall. And I did that last, like two weeks ago. And just a couple of days ago, it got accepted. So it's called Definite Recall to be back to active duty. So now I'm back to active duty for three years minimum, up to five if I extend. And I'm just going to do a recruiting duty here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Wow. Yeah, so I'll be re- doing recruiting. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll go to Florida for training for like three months, and then I'll come back. And when you're recruiting, you're going to different events. You're just talking to people, letting them know a little bit more about the Navy. Mm-hmm. 
That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm excited for that. Well, this is kind of what you're going to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I'm I'm just happy to be back active duty and to be here in Utah and do it. So I seen a, a photo you took. Um, I want to say it might have been during maybe like the first you know part of your stint. And you posted a patch and you were like, this is like that meant something to you. Um, how many patches and what do these patches mean? Um, so you have on your shoulders, you'll wear like a command patch and that just shows where, where you're stationed, where you're currently at. So it's more informational. Mm. Um, you wear a rank tab and that just signifies your, your rank. So people know how to address you and they know, they know who you are. And then you'll wear a rating badge, which will identify your job. So, because I'm logistics, my rate is called LS, and then I'm a second class, which is E5. So, if somebody was to see, like, me in uniform, they'd be able to be like, oh, hey, LS2. Mm -hmm. And so, it's just so you know, because you, everything's by rank, right? So yeah. Just so you know who's who, basically. Is there a certain ranking you want to get to or that you aspire to? Yeah, I would love to be a chief. I, I think that. I never wanted that until very recently. So I'll pro I'm probably going to do the 20 years. You know, they call me Dre, the number one chief rocker. <laughs> is, that, is that disrespectful? <laughs> do I need to take the chief out? <laughs> no. All right, cool. I can still be a chief. <coughs> you got the chief without the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was given to it. Uh, it's given me that name by by the streets. Now, um, one thing I always see is uh, the stolen Valards on uh, mm. YouTube. What does the military think about this? Had a friend get kicked out for, he did a TikTok. He was being funny. He was just being funny. And uh, he just did a TikTok. He had his sea bag. He had his uniform. He just got out of boot camp, just checked into the command. And um, he was doing a TikTok. And he's like, I just got back from deployment. Roughest time of my life. And just had a whole little story. But. I mean, that's not, there's worse cases than that, but that's as minimal as. I was going to say, like, you did the work. You're going to get to wherever <laughs> you're going to, you know, be. Just wait it out, homie. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to post a real one. Yeah. yeah, but it got back to, um, somebody reported it. I think it started out as funny, like, oh, he's stupid, look at this. And it just kept going up and up to higher ups kept seeing it. And then it just. You can't play. Yeah. Military is not a game. No, it's not. I've seen people get kicked out for crazy things. I've seen, I've been in a bar and I've seen military dudes check a guy because of a tattoo. Oh really? Yeah. My man's had a certain tattoo and the, the military guys were asking him questions and they're like, there's no way. Like you're, you're mentioning things that were 40 years ago. Like you're not, that's not even the right thing. And I'm oblivious to it because all everything you're saying, that's why I'm so interested in it because I don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, they they walked this dude out for false and like he was mm. in the military. Yeah, um, it's pretty big actually. There's a lot of guy like so if you go to like a DI shop or something, people people just donate their old military uniforms and people will wear them mm. and and pretend that they were in. So we've seen that quite a bit in certain places. What's the, um, how do you feel like our military is treated? Not even like within the military, but like from civilians. It's, it was, it's pretty rare that I've received disrespect from being in the military. I definitely receive more praise and it, it, I feel like it's, in my experience, it's pretty supported. I feel like at least I've, I've received really good respect and support from it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I do, um, there's this thing called honor guard. So I'm a part of that out here now. And anytime that somebody in the military has passes away and we'll go out there and we'll do this beautiful ceremony. Like if they do the gun, the gun shootings or like, um, the folding of the flag and we'll present it to the family and it's really beautiful. And the families, they so supportive and very thankful and grateful for, when the military, mm -hmm. but they, they always talk about that. So I, it's pretty, so at least I feel I've had, I've never had a bad experience. Yeah. It's, um, you guys are a part of a, a very sacred, um, powerful thing. I mean, you guys, you guys support a whole nation. Uh, honestly, like you guys are the peacekeepers on the whole world, you know, mm -hmm. like it's not just our, our land. Like you guys, you guys do a lot. And, um, you yeah, know, they've sent a lot of people out recently. So there's, Tons of people out just with everything that happened with Israel. 
That was something else I was going to ask. With it being, with tensions going high, with uh, what's going on in the Middle East, and there's always, you know, talks with China and whatnot. Is that why you decided to go back to active duty? I just love it. There's just... It's just a, it's just a part of me. I just I don't think I cannot. I just I don't know. I got here and I just I gave it a chance to do it without. So I, um, I became a like the certified personal trainer and I started doing. I mean, I've always been into fitness, but I was like, I'm gonna give that a go. And I got certified and I love that too. I'm always gonna do that. But I just felt empty. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. I just didn't feel like. Um, I don't know, I felt successful, I guess. I feel successful when I do that. I feel accomplished. I'm like, I'm not letting that go because it feels great. What did the kids think? <laughs> they having a hard time? When I got out, my daughter was like, where are you going to work now? And she was like, please don't work at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with McDonald's? All right. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious, but. That is funny. Um, I got back in and they got really scared and they're like, so you're leaving. They got mad, actually. They're like, you're just leaving. You're just gonna be. You're just gonna be gone. Mm. They didn't even let me finish that I was gonna stay here. Yeah. And they're like, okay, fine. They just shut down, and I'm like, I gotta stay here. And they're like, for how long? I was like, three to five years. And then they they got really happy. So. Is it just a regular nine to five? Like, do you have like a clock in, clock out? It's it's like nine to seven. Oh, okay. It's not bad. No, that's. And not then bad probably weekends, but I don't know. I haven't started yet. I start next week. Now, when I go to the little car shows or the fair. Usually the military's there, yeah. and usually it's the Marines, and they have the little pull-up bar. Yeah. How many pull-ups can you do, or how long can you hold up? I think it's rigged. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's rigged. <laughs> for real, for real. I think the Marines rigged this bar for what? people not to win a stuffed animal. What? <laughs> the, little, the little Marine bear. Oh, gosh. <laughs> people just can't be doing pull-ups. Get out there and do fitness. But you can I can. Your fitness is crazy. Yeah. Like you, you've just been killing it. I can do like 18 pull-ups, real pull-ups. I can do a lot. Have you ever thought about doing like a like a American Ninja Warrior a TV show? No. Survival of the fittest? Yeah. No. Why not? This is not the time. It is the time, but it's not the time. Well, with the military, you know, you can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. You can't be gone. You're They're very strict on your time. You have to request to... To go on leave and usually then it's just a couple days you don't get much time i think you do good at one of those little fitness shows oh, i think so too i think it'll be fun too i think so too see Wait, you cry same. on tv <laughs> <laughs> he's still emotional are you an emotional little human being i cry for everything i cry if something happy if i see something like happy and touchy like i just like oh i get so sentimental <laughs> but then like if i'm mad i've like controlled my rage i used to be so angry when i was younger and now I'm just like, oh, he just cried out. Like any emotion, and I just it results in a tear. Have you ever, um, have you ever done like uh, therapy? Actually, have uh, in the military they um, they do offer you some some really good resources. Um, I did it. I just did it because I wanted to, and I I don't think that that was so much healing for my life, but I gave it a shot, and I I mean. At least it showed me that I'm open and willing, and I like that. But, you know, it just it didn't really, it wasn't a good fit for me. And I don't, I'm not putting down therapy or counseling. I know that's wonderful for a lot of people, and it's a good starting point. Mm-hmm. I think that I was just a little bit, I was searching for something different, and it, it wasn't there. But I enjoyed the experience. Do you think that going through fit therapy and go, trying that experience, do you think that led you to this next journey in your life? With uh, generational healing? The, the therapy? Yeah. Or, or what sparked um, the generational healing? Okay. I want to talk about that a little bit. The generational bit. healing. Okay, so I was already in the military. I've already divorced. I've already... I feel like I've done a lot of things in my life already. I've, I've already I'm already mom. I already got married. I already got divorced. I'm in the military. I've done college. Like, why do I feel so empty? Why do I feel so lost? Why do I not feel good like what something's missing and I don't know what I can't like I'm just I can't figure it out like I've I've had a good life like it's not a bad one but I just feel so uh, like alone and lost I don't know just it feels so like something's missing or 
you can't even place it because you don't know, but you just know something. You're looking for something. You don't even know what. So I thought that that maybe was, um, I thought that, okay, so let me backtrack. I ended up finding God more so. I mean, I've always had him, but like I deepened my relationship with him and that, that alone has been really wonderful too, but that's, that's what kind of led me to more healing. I was like, oh, it's my heart that needs healing. Mm. So then um, I think I had to stop going to churches because with, with work, my work, so I think we were like 12 on, 12 off. I didn't have time for church, unfortunately. And um, honestly, it found me. So somebody told me about generational healing. Actually, it was my mom. My mom had told me they went to like a state, like a fair out here in Utah. I was in California at the time. And she was like, you should give it a go. So I was like, okay. And, um, okay, let me explain what generational healing is. I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. <laughs> so generational healing, it is, well, it's just what it is, generational healing. It's when you can help heal your ancestors and the trauma that's been passed down through the bloodline. So there's obviously, like, things get passed down generational to generations to generations, right? And, like, you yeah, have family trauma and family history and there's things that just get passed down through your bloodline and through your genetics, and it it can affect the way that you operate as a person, to, and you don't even know it because you just think that, oh, this is just who I am. Mm. This is just me, and it's really not. It's just trauma that's been passed down to you, and because it's not healed, it's affecting you. And if, if like, you don't heal it, it's just going to get keep passed down and passed down and passed down, and people will just think that it's their personality trait or it's just who they are inside and it's really not so for example for one of my own experiences um I went to receive a healing session and it was from somebody I did not know and I just I let her do her thing and sometimes there's a story that goes with it and sometimes they'll not they'll tell you like maybe an ancestor who steps forward and um so for me she told me it was a woman on my mom's side and the ancestor that set forward just felt really like unloved and unappreciated by her family and she like did a lot of work and she made you know back then you worked by hand so she made like really beautiful things to sell and it just went unnoticed and she just cried and cried and cried and she cried for everything cried a lot just her whole life just cried and cried and cried and cried and I know we just joked about like me crying mm -hmm. <laughs> but prior to I cry now for like a healthy amount of crying but my life prior I cried for everything like when I was married I was just like you're too sensitive like everything made me cry and I if my mom yelled at me like somebody gave me like no matter what I was just and then I didn't notice it that it wasn't normal till my ad adult years and I'm like damn why am I crying so much like just stop this shit ain't that serious mm -hmm. and I was able to like recognize that like stop fucking crying and I just couldn't everything hurt me and I'm like okay like something's wrong like I don't know what's wrong and I can't stop crying and um I when I received that generational healing it just really resonated with me because I'm like I've cried my entire life for everything just for nothing and and then after I received that healing and I was able to help heal that ancestor's trauma that was passed down to me and again, I just thought I cried because I, I chalked it. I'm like, oh, this is just who I am. This is just me. I'm just sensitive. Like, mm -hmm. love me, accept me. And everyone was just like, no, you're too sensitive. Like, granted, you shouldn't tell that to people, but they were ultimately right. Something, it was, it was a lot. And after I received that session, I, I only cry an appropriate amount now. Like, mm. I mean, who's to say what's appropriate, but like, it feels right, like. Oh, yeah and it it just healed me in that but that's just one example i've had multiple sessions you can get them all the time and every time you get a session you're healing something from your ancestors and your family and it just helps for your future generations and it's just such an incredible work and it just heals your heart space and allows your your mind and your heart to connect and allows you to feel what you're really feeling some people it was actually crazy to me because the more i do this work a lot of people don't even know how they're feeling they say they're feeling one way and they're really feeling another, but they're not able to properly to place their emotions mm -hmm. or like what their body's experiencing. So I don't know, it's very beautiful. And how long have you been practicing? I started in two, 2000 and like 2019, but I took a break just being on the ship. Yeah. And then I just started back up. 
Do you do you think this would really help like your <coughs> your folks in the military? I think it would help anybody, anybody around the world. I think but the thing is is this work is really only for people right now who are open and ready to be received and to want deeper healing and to and to move forward because a lot of people can have opinions on it and if they're not ready and they're like have doubt or like no 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 that's not real it's not going to work for them because you're already closed off and you're not even open to receiving anything mm -hmm. so if if somebody's not on their healing journey or like looking for deeper aspirations like that it's not going to it's not going to work mm. like if you choose not to believe in something you're absolutely right that's not going to be real that's not going to be a fit for you but if you're open to receive and have an experience and see what happens for you it can be so life changing because not only does it like when you heal yourself and your family, it it extends out. It it will help your like intermediate family, so your mom or your dad or your brother or your sisters, and it helps feel like heal your future generations. You're like your kids to come. The more healing you do as an individual is going to just keep going and going and going. But I don't think people knew that back then in the days. The well, I don't think back in the day they even knew about mental health and about healing within and. And this type of stuff, mm -hmm. I feel like it was very much don't talk about your emotions. Don't talk about feelings. Don't talk about those things. You just keep your head down and keep working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And I think in today's day, it's it's so many people just you need to progress. You need to grow. You need to you need to heal and grow because we're evolving. I think collectively we're all we're evolving constantly. And I, you don't want to get left behind by not evolving. You don't want to be. Uh, I there's a YouTuber I don't even know his name but I watch his videos all the time and he always talks about your brain being like a, a computer and he's like once c computers get older you have to like update them or you're going to be running on an old outdated software and it and it just clicked for me because our brain and our hearts are like that you have to constantly update it or you're going to get stuck in an old way of thinking or old habits that just don't even really work anymore and you're just stuck in this repeated cycle and pattern and do you see it branching off and helping your family Oh, my family has changed. It's changed drastically. Um, I hated my mom as a kid. Mm. Hated. I literally have journals about how much I hated my mom. And because she just wasn't the parent that I needed. She wasn't the parent that I wanted. I was so different from my entire family growing up, I feel like. And once I think I started healing before all of them. But and I'd never shared it with them because we just weren't close. And my, I never thought I would have a relationship with my mom or my sisters. Every time I would come home for the holidays, even in the military, I'm like, why am I here? Like, I hate this. Mm. And um, it wasn't even until, like, probably two years ago. By by healing myself, I was able to experience real forgiveness. And, like, I actually really love my mom. And I can say that. Why you, I mean, I've always said it, but I kind of cringe, like, ugh. And I can, I can genuinely say, like, I love my mom. And I have a relationship with her now. And even though I'm older, I just never thought that it would come. And so, like, my younger self never would have believed that that could be a thing. And I, I think I have a really good relationship with my sisters. I never had that. I feel like I have a family, mm -hmm. and I just never had that. But I, that's nothing I did. I mean, healing helped create the space and the energy, and, and it allowed for that to happen. But if I never healed, like, my mind and my heart, that was never going to happen. What was their response? Like, for you to turn on a new leaf and be like, you guys are my family. I love you guys. I've worked on myself. I've, you know, done this thing. What was their response? Um, I think they're still, I, I mean, they definitely accept it. Uh, I, it's hard to say because they're in a different place than I am. Mm. But I know where the place they are at because I, I was just there not, mm. you know, a couple of years ago. So... I don't expect or, and that's the thing too, is like I don't even put expectations on them anymore. As a kid, I think that's what I did. I expected them to respond in a certain way to things that I would do or say. And I, I've learned you can't really ex put expectations on people, family or not family. You can't ex put an expectation on how a person should respond, on how they should act or how their emotions should be. And I used to do that all the time. And now I just give them the space to have their own emotions because they're on their own journey and sometimes they receive they, they they might not receive as deeply as i do they might not understand or they 
I have to let them have the ability to grow. If I keep putting like this expectation on them, you need to be here, you need to act there, they're never going to be themselves Mm -hmm. or respond how they, they need to show up for themselves. So I, I don't, I don't look for that in them. I just, I'm happy that they're growing as an individual because the more they grow, the closer we're always going to be. But my family never grew before. We were just, we're just zombies. We just wake up, go to work eat sleep repeat do it again like there was no real living like you can be alive and not live yeah i think we're living now but that was never the case then i said generational healing yeah that's crazy it's beautiful it all works once you once you do the work right um how how is brie now like how are you how are you how are you um, juggling, you know, being a mother, military, starting your own business. Do you feel like things are, you feel like leveled out? You feel like things are chaotic? No, I know? feel so whole. I feel so good. Um, I honestly just want to help people. I, and it, I think that's where it's different in my life now versus then is then it was always about me. Like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't manage. I'm a mom. I have to work. I don't have time for that. It was always like a reason and excuse why something wasn't happening. I can't do this because I have to go here. I'm not doing that because I have to go to work. I can't. I don't have time. I'm like, I'm a mom. Like, I just had a reason and excuse for like my misery, I guess, of like why my life wasn't the way that I wanted it to be. And now it's just, I feel like unstoppable. Like I can do if you want it, you're going to get it. You just have to want it and not be lazy because I'm a mom, I'm a military. I never miss a workout. I do my business. Like you, you can make the time. You just, if you find the right heart space to do it and you're happy doing what you do, like you, your emotions will change the way you move and the way you move will make you want to do more. And even, and like now it's not even about me. Like I've already worked on myself. I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not, pr- I have so much more work to go, mm-hmm. but because where I'm at now, it's, I want to give back and help people get there because I'm able, I just feel so whole inside. I feel happy. Mm-hmm. I feel, I feel content. I don't, I don't feel, I think I found my purpose, I guess. And it's just to help people, whether it's mental, emotional, physical, it's just guiding people. I just want to help. I just want to serve. It's really just about serving my community and the people. That sounds so cheesy. No, it doesn't. <laughs> That's how you know I'm getting older. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, we are old. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it is. It's not even a – I think I had to go through all of these lessons to be here because how can you really serve and help somebody if you if you can't really relate to the experience? Mm-hmm. Like, those are the best teachers, and I think I just had to go through those to become a better teacher and like a healer and a helper and a guider. And I just, I feel like this world needs so much help. There's so many girls and men, men and women, children, everybody there's who feels lost, don't know how to feel what they're doing, why they're going. And they just get so stuck in like whatever the situation they're in, in the moment, they don't realize that that's not going to be them in a year. Mm. They can be a different person in a year if they want to, they can actually change and grow and you can make and i didn't know this as a kid i didn't know people made conscious like conscious decisions for your future i just did it whatever in the moment Mm -hmm. and i feel like a lot of people do that i didn't know that i didn't know that you made choices now to affect tomorrow i never did that i do it now but yeah you know that's how like i didn't know about goals and how to be a person you want to be i just live i just you see what people around me were doing. I think there's a balance too, though, because I feel like you should live where your shoes are too. I feel like you should live in the present, mm-hmm. right? Like it's hard. Like I don't want to stress about five years from now, you know, and I don't want to stress about five years back. Like there's, there's, I think there's a healthy balance between living in the present, but also planning for the future, right? Mm-hmm. Going forth some things. Like you just mentioned goals, right? Yeah. Um, whether if it's to have a certain ranking in the military or starting a, your own business or, you know, having a certain physical, you know, goal set in mind. Um, but also if you do the work today to get to there, you'll be good. Right. So you're, you're absolutely right. Living in the moment. That is, I can't stress that enough either because so many people live in the past. Mm-hmm. I cannot, I met so many people in my life that just live in the past. They're stuck in their trauma. They're stuck in their their family trauma, their relationship trauma, just their past. They're so stuck on it that they let their past decide and dictate their future. 
and it is so bad but or like people who live in the future they're too worried they're too stressed and they they don't worry about the past but they're just worried about tomorrow they're not even thinking about today but i think if you live in the moment today and you just strive to be genuinely the best person you can be mm -hmm. And that's going to look different for everybody. That's not yeah. a one shoe fits all. But if you just be the best person that you can be, your tomorrow is going to look a lot better. Or mm -hmm. it's going to feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. And because if you can make your your good choices today, that's going to set you up for tomorrow. You don't have to worry and stress about your goals because they're going to naturally line up for you. You're going to be in alignment with them because you're following your heart and you're being a good person. If you're living in the moment and just making reckless choices, like, you might have a good time, but it's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. Does uh, through all of this, does Bree have companionship along the way? Oh, I've learned. I've, I've received companionship as a gift. Like, I think I never had that. You can talk about it and you can be like, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Companionship. <laughs> you said companionship. And I, I heard compassion. <laughs> I have compassion now. <laughs> that was a gift. Um, Companionship. Oh, <laughs> that's one of the parts I'm working on. <laughs> I I do get, I'm not going to say, like, I don't have the opportunity. Um, well, talk your shit. No, right. no, no, no. They're no. lining up for me. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all, actually. <laughs> I don't think that I, I don't put the energy out there to receive it. I'm very closed off. Still, I have a very open heart, but when it comes to relationships, that's one of the parts I'm still very struggling on. Um, I just have such high expectations now, and I feel like I've always settled and i mean i got married because i thought that's what i should have did mm. and i just never want to be in that position again and i just really want to be certain and sure and when i pick a partner i want to know that they are an, and that's what i mean by making conscious choices yeah. just be like somebody can love me and the old me would have been like oh my gosh you love me we should be together that's no i i need someone who's going to be a good match for me like you don't have to be better than me by any means but like how are you mentally? How are you emotionally? Are you emotionally available? Are you going to grow? Are you going to, like, if we're going through troubles, I need to know how you're going to proceed with these good and bad times. Like, if you're just reckless, I don't, I don't want that. I don't, I don't have time to figure. Like, I need a, I need a person who's figured themselves out because. That's a little tough, though, because you got to figure, figure it out along the way, too, right? You're not yes. going to, it's not going to be the most traumatic time when we first meet. Right. You know, like. It's going to probably be a few years or whatever down the line. You're going to have a traumatic event. And we'll see what happens, right? But that's why I need to know that their personality trait, that they're able and capable and willing and wanting to to proceed the right way. But, Bree, <laughs> you know you're real friends when shit goes down, right? We go to the club. We're going for a great time. Everybody's laughing and everything like that. But when shit goes down at the end of the night, are they running down the street or are they standing and fighting with me? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. That's how I determine if those are my real friends or not. In the situation? It's the same thing with the relationship. Oh. If you give somebody a chance, you're gonna, there's going to be a moment in that relationship where they're going to show their ass and you're going to be like, okay, they're really down for me. Yeah. They held it down. They were composed, whatever. Oh, you're right. Or they just ran off, right? Or they were closed off or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you have to, I feel like you have to give a little to get something. Oh, you're right. That's the thing that sucks you're about right. these relationship things because you're going to invest time into a gamble. <sighs> <laughs> and you just don't know. No, I'm not ready for that. I don't. Uh, my time is so valuable. Yeah, but you have to give if you want companionship. I do. And companionship's awesome, right? Ready, I'm ready to be a wife, to be honest. I say oh, it, I say it like every God. day. No, she's not. <laughs> yes, I am. No, my, no, you are not. You just, everything that you just said <laughs> says you're not ready to be a wife. <laughs> I am. I okay. Honestly, honestly, I do say it often, and that's why I know it's coming. I really am ready to be a wife. I I want to. Jesus Christ! You gotta, you gotta date first. <laughs> I know. I just don't want to. You don't want to go through the date phase. I wanna you date. Just want to just marriage. I, I pray to God all the time. God, please send me my husband. Oh my gosh! I just don't want to date. <laughs> I don't want to date. Dating hey, is awful. Well, here's the thing. I've been with my no. girl for ten years, and I haven't dated in. The digital era, like this whole, you know, social media dating thing. I've never done it. And so to be in your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. That sucks. Yeah, I know. See, my reckless choices before and now I'm dealing with this. I can't, it's hard. There's, some, there's probably hard. some dudes at the gym that are probably giving you little, 
little breadcrumbs. Yeah, of and they're interest. probably giving everybody breadcrumbs. I don't want their nasty ass breadcrumbs. See, you're worrying too uh, much about everything else. It's not worry. It's just I don't want. I want a guy who doesn't go after every every girl. Well, they're dating. They're supposed to. How are you going to find your companion? Ugh. It, you're looking for a hallmark. Sweep me off my feet. I told you my, my expectations are high. <laughs> it's bad. I got I to gotta figure it out. I don't have it figured out. I'm also, I just. <sighs> Here's all the excuses. What was the last date you went on? <laughs> my, the last date I went on. And how was it? Okay, so I go on little dates, but I I know that they're not like my my forever not my future. So you don't pay him no mind. I do. I would never. Oh my gosh, Bree. You got a lot to work on. I told you when it comes to love, <laughs> so I don't got to figure it out. <laughs> I don't got to figure it out. You go on micro dates and you, you, your mind is set right away. The dude can't even make a mistake. <laughs> That's not true. Okay. 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 If I go on a date, what do I look for? What he orders? Are you paying attention to what he orders? I think I look for a connection. Uh, it sounds so dumb. I look, f- I feel like I, I'm i really good at listening to my body, and I just feel like I just, you know what? Those are pheromones. <laughs> <laughs> like, am I horny or not? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that could be true. No, I just, okay, doesn't matter the, the 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 facts of it doesn't matter the point is is when i know i'm gonna know when i meet the person i'm gonna know and it doesn't matter if it's date one or date 12 and it doesn't matter if he's funny or not it's like none of the none of those things are gonna matter i'm just going to know you know what you just reminded me of there's a movie on netflix and it's called leave the world behind i believe i think that's what it's called so julia roberts ethan mm-hmm. hawk mm-hmm. have you seen it i started and finished so there's a moment in this movie where Julia Roberts, little her daughter, she's sitting in bed with her mom and she's like, she's telling a story. And this is a story that we've heard before where she's like, um, the man was looking for a sign from God to help him. And, you know, God sent him three different people. Right. He sent he sent him a, a mailman that had him a message with a letter, but he didn't open the letter. He sent him. Um, the guy with the hammer to help him break open the thing, but he didn't use the hammer. He sent him the other dude with the thing and all this thing that led up to God sending him messages. Mm-hmm. And I, and when you say this, I'm like, I wonder if God, you say, God, send me my husband. I do. And, and God's sending you all of these people. <sighs> and he's God's like, well, I sent you Jerry, <laughs> but you were too worried about what Jerry was ordering. Or I sent you Jeff and Jeff did this, but you didn't like Jeff because of this. Mm-hmm. Sometimes... I feel like God is going to give you what's what you, what you asked for. Yeah. But are you willing to receive it? Because who You're knows? Right. Who knows? God might be like, okay, do you want a husband? Your whole life's going to change. Mm-hmm. God might be like, no more military. God might be like, you're going to sit your ass down. You're right. God might be like, I'm going to give you the perfect husband, the perfect life that you want. Mm-hmm. But I am going to take away some of this other stuff because in order for you to have that, I need you to get rid of this. Damn. Who knows? I don't know. No. That's you and your spirituality. You're right. I think I needed to hear that. But those, damn, it's real. That's real. That's so real. And I think, damn, no, you're right because don't hit Jerry up now. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, come back. <laughs> like the Ben and Jerry's yeah. <laughs> uh, the chunky monkey. <laughs> I do. Oh gosh. No, you're so right. I, I know that I want a husband, and I do pray because I'm. I am ready to love somebody, but you're right. I think ultimately though, I'm not ready. Mm. And I know that. And that's why it's chaotic for me because when you go after something and you're not ready for it, your life will be in balance. It's not going to work out for you. It's going to be messy because I wasn't meant for you. And I'm not meant to settle down right now because I still have too much going on. I'm just starting recruiting and I want to kick ass at that. I love the military. I'm not giving that up. Not anytime soon. Mm. I God will make you if you if you if God makes please. you one. I'm just saying you're saying I'm not giving God <laughs> laughing right now. How <laughs> you think? Yeah, <laughs> but no, who knows? Right. God puts you where you are. And for just a reason. like just being back with the kids, like I don't have time to give up for that. I mm. love that time. And with my business, I really, really, really want to grow that. And I know I just started small now, and I have the cute little office. But imagine in two years where I could be. Oh yeah. But I gotta like. I got to dedicate that. That is so important to me. Like, I'm not, I can't, as much as what I really, really want, 
I'm just not ready for it. So it's good that I want it. And I love that I can have like the awareness of that because I want it, but I'm not ready for it. And there's still things I have to get in place to be ready to be that perfect wife or to have that person. I think, I think now that I know that I want that is going to shift things on the way that I act and how I, how I do things a little bit, but you're, I'm not ready. And I know that, but I, I do know that I do know that when it comes, I am, I am going to know. And I, I don't know how that's going to look for me, but I pray to God all the time. And if it comes for God, it's not going to be questioned. It's not going to be confused. Like my heart and my soul is just going to be so full and I'm just going to know. And Mm. there's not going to be a question and there's not going to be a doubt or a wonder. And God's going to fill me with that, with that. He's, this is promise to me. This is promise to all of us. And I don't, I trust him so deeply with that. It's just, I'm impatient with my timeline. I hear you. Um, are you staying in Utah? Do you have plans to, to stay here? Yep, I'm here. I'm okay. here for a little while. At least five years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, out of all the places you've traveled, what, what's a place that you're like, oh, I love this place. I want to go back here. We travel to Key West, Florida a lot for training. Um, they do a lot of aircraft training over there, but it's just a big party. <laughs> a big party. <laughs> Duval Street, if anybody's ever been. Oh, my gosh. It's a wonderful time. Yeah. Love it there. Yeah. Outside the country? Oh, outside the country? Mm, I love Jamaica. Jamaica was really cool. I think I probably talk about there more than I do anywhere. I would love to go back there. Um, the ship that I just got off, they're about to go to some really cool ports. I'm a little bit hurt about that. I was going to say, you sound a little a little envious. <laughs> yeah, they're going to some really, really cool places. And I'm just like, ugh. But we'll see. We'll see what's in the store for the next couple of years. Was Bob Marley really big in Jamaica? No, <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I went to the touristy spots. I mean, you always think of Jamaica. I think about Bob Marley and number weed. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah, a lot of weed. They have a lot of uh, <laughs> they uh, at all the all the stands. They 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 sell some special brownies. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. So a lot of goat meat. Have you eaten anything like crazy? Food wise, yeah, um, traveling. I mean, no. No, no, you're not a foodie, huh? Mm, not like that. No, not like that. What's your What's your guilty pleasure? Cho- chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I eat a lot of chocolate. Yeah. Oh, the um, Ferrero Rochers are. Oh, oh okay. My gosh, so good. But then there's a Hagen Dazs ice cream that I can eat all the time too. It's a, it's a white chocolate raspberry swirl, something. Sounds fancy. Yeah, it's really good. Um, did you do anything for Thanksgiving? Where was I? Oh, it was my first Thanksgiving care with my family. I haven't spent, it's been like seven years since I've had Thanksgiving with my family. I've usually been with friends or by myself. How was it? It was actually very sweet. We, um. Now you just saying that? No. Okay. Cause I know that you like to <laughs> put on a face. Ah, it was cool, but no, it I'd was- rather be in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I would be honest with that. No, it was. It was really cool to see the dynamic change within my family because there was no fighting. Nobody, there was like no attitude. Everybody was in a really good, uh, really, really good place. And just like probably most families, you know, you go around and say what you're grateful for. And we prayed and said what we were grateful for. And there was many of us who got emotional and shed a little tear just out of sharing what they were. I love that. I love love. Oh, my family has grown so much. I I honestly can't thank God enough for, like, the blessings that he's changed on my family. And it's, it's been a lot of years, but. It's what's the what's the plan for uh, Christmas? I think we're doing breakfast. I don't know. Do you cook? That's, you one, just, that's one of the things I'm working on to be a wife. <laughs> <laughs> you can't cook? I can. You just open up the little no, package? No, no, no. What's what? the little package you guys eat? I can. <laughs> I just don't because I've been by myself for so long. Wait, wait. With the military, like, I don't have, my kids are, you know, I, summers and holidays and yeah. haven't had them for, I mean, I cook when I have them, but I've been by myself for so long. And you don't cook yourself a nice meal? I hate cooking for myself. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> my no friend. wonder she's single. <laughs> She can't feed you. <laughs> You're like, here's a protein bar. To be honest. <laughs> to be honest. Yes. Also. Use yeah, some electrolytes. I, take three powders. <laughs> I meal prep a lot. 
that's yeah. it's gonna be something that I'll have to work on because I meal prep for myself and I know my meal plan it's strategically how it needs to be with all my macros and yeah I know I don't cook like a fancy meal or like for what random night because I have my beautiful meal prep I have to set myself up for my fitness and shit do you have any uh fitness goals like do you want to run a marathon or anything like that so I've done I've done several half marathons I think I'm ready to do my first marathon I, I think that that's a thing this year for 2024. I'm very nervous and excited for that. Um, How do you, in, did, have you always enjoyed running? Or when did you fall in love with running, if start, you are? Yeah, it started out as a fitness journey. Um, being short, I tend to look a little a little wider than my friends. So I was always like, I was like, I was, I was always a fat friend, kind of, basically. Uh, at least I feel like, I don't know if that they ever said that. I always felt like that. My friends were always very skinny and thin. And, yeah, just being short, I felt that struggle. So it started off as a weight loss. And then there were some guys that would be like, oh, you're chubby. And they'd call my friends, like, um, the taquitos. And then I was the chimichanga. So. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, chimichanga <laughs> tastes way better than taquitos. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my, my running started out as, like, a weight loss. Mm. And this was even before weights or anything. It was just constantly running. And it started out as a weight loss. And then... And then I, uh, I lost the weight, and then I just my body craved running, and I was like, oh, shit, I kind of want to run. Started out going and going and going, and then it just turned into a passion. And I, I get such a runner's high, like mental clarity, the the way that my heart races that fast, and then I can like slow it down and then get it right back. This is just incredible. This is just an incredible feeling. I do really have a passion for it. I've ran, like I said, so many half marathons. I ran a half marathon at like eight months pregnant. Holy moly. Yeah, it was cleared by my doctor. It was fine. But it was, that one was hard, but I did it. Don't you shake the baby? Well, they're protected. They got all kinds of fluids and sex. I don't know. <laughs> no, but yeah, running is incredible. I love running. I I absolutely love it. I love it. The passion for sure. Would you uh would you do your marathon here or would you want to travel and do like a famous one? No, there's one out here I want to do. It's uh in Science National Park. Oh wow. Yeah. So I think that I love nature. I don't know if you see all my hikes. Oh and yeah, shit. I see all these beautiful hikes. Maybe climbing all the mountains, but there's actually a river uh, a sh- like a I think you went to like a a hot spring. Mm-hmm. And um when I seen this thing, it was like th- the clearest bluest water I've ever seen. Yeah. And I don't know if it was just a picture, if that's how it was in real life. But if it was a hot spring, it was probably the fifth hot springs. Yep. Yep. And I'm like, wow, like, man, it's a beautiful hike what she went on. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm like, damn, if she takes a tumble down this mountain, <laughs> <laughs> be bad yeah. news. Oh, we did uh, Mount, Mount Olympus. Nope. We did Mount, oh, Tim- the Timpanogos. Mm. Oh, my God. That one was rough. That was, was that the one where they had graffiti? Like, people signed something on a... A rock oh yeah, or the, uh, there's like a little house at the top. That was the one where I posted the mountain goats. Yeah, yeah, that one was cool. I thought that was a different country. It looked like another country. It was incredibly beautiful. This spring was absolutely amazing. The fall too. I put the fall pictures. Oh, it was beautiful. Is there a hike that you haven't done that you want to go and do? Uh, I haven't done Twin Peaks. That one I I think is one of the hardest ones here in Utah. So that'll be a next year one. But you don't want to do like uh, Mount Kilimanjaro or anything like that. Is that where's that? Africa. Oh, I don't. I don't know anything outside of Utah. <laughs> yeah, you don't. I mean, there's well, there's famous ones like the uh, the one where all the people die. Right. Um. Damn, the Arctic that. one. Yeah. Uh, oh what? Oh my gosh! What I is know, it called? Um, not Rushmore. What is it Rushmore? <laughs> not Rushmore. It's not. I know. That's just what I keep hearing. It's um. Oh. Yeah, where all the people die. There's like a movie on it. Yeah, the green jacket guy that's still up there. Yeah. What is it? Everybody's yelling right now. It's this. Anyway. I don't know. I can't think. What the fuck? <laughs> you got to watch that movie though on Netflix. I don't know if you watch movies often, but yeah. check out that movie. Leave the world behind. Finish it. Okay. Tell me what your thoughts are on it. There's a lot of conspiracies about this movie. A lot of conspiracies. Well, I was into it, and then it looked like kind of like it was kind of all over the place, and I was oh, like, it was man. jumping all over, and I'm like, okay, and then I paused it and I didn't go back. 
Let's let's be honest. Your story started off by jumping all over the place, but you caught up. You okay. got better with your story. <laughs> oh Lord, <laughs> Bree. Um, do you have social media for the new business yet? Um, not for. I haven't. It's it's that's my literally next thing. I'm hoping in the next month to have that. I do not yet. Okay. But my office is in West Jordan. Do you want to throw the address out? Yeah, it's. The brand new address. She just got it. She was just telling me about how she decorated it. She got it all nice and stuff. Um, cute. So if you're looking for generational healing, something to, to help better yourself, um, Bree's going to tell you how you can get a hold of her. Okay, that is on 7378 South Plaza, and it's Suite 202. It's in West Jordan. So it's in the same parking lot as the Altitude Jumpling Trampoline Park. You know what I'm talking about? It's, uh, so it's in a studio building, and it's called Rogers Premier. Oh, you're right there? Yeah. My boy Sean's there. Oh, is he do yeah. hair? Yeah, it's our barber. Oh, cool. The Boogie Down Barbershop. I think he's in 211. Oh, okay, I'll have to go meet him. Yeah. I'm in, two, I'm in 202. Maybe I've already met him. You probably have. Is he right when you walk in? So you walk in, and then you take a right, and he's like four doors down if you go south. Okay, maybe. Yeah, I, I haven't been. I'm on the other. I'm to the left. Oh, so. it's easy to find. Um, it's a beautiful location. My mm -hmm. boy Fonzie actually hung up all the chandeliers and everything in there. Oh wow! Yeah, so I'm I'm very familiar right there. Um, it's literally in the um, what's that? Jordan Landing? Not Jordan Landing. It is Jordan Landing mm -hmm. uh, area. So definitely go go get yourself gener generational healing. Are you gonna have a website and things like that? Yes. Cool. Um, do you have? Do you want to throw out your personal social? Yeah. Oh, my social. Yeah. Um, my social. <laughs> <laughs> She's on five two. <laughs> um, it's just Ombre Elizondo on Instagram. I don't really use. I have a Facebook. I don't use it. I definitely stick to Instagram more. You've been killing it with the Instagram. It's been looking really good. Thank you. It's my fitness. I think I use it mostly for fitness and like outdoors, but. Like Bree, here she goes running again. <laughs> I, I keep on waiting for you to drop the phone when you're like running. I'm like, where's the phone gonna drop? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see my last snowboarding video. It was bad. Have you been this season? <laughs> yeah, I got a season pass up to Brighton. Have you went this season though? Mm -hmm. How's it been? <coughs> it's fun. Snow's great. So soft. A lot of powder. Well, at least when I went. Snow. What do they call that? Snow bro. You a snow bro? Snow bro. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Don't you ever get worried about avalanches? No. I'd be scared. I'd be doing the most dangerous things. I think unless there's not an adrenaline in it, I don't want it. Oh, my gosh. That's why she's single, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bree, no, I really appreciate you coming uh, by. <laughs> Generational healing. Um, definitely go tap in with her. Um, I appreciate it. Hopefully, you, you had a good time. I did. Thank you. Um, next time, I want you to come on. We'll talk more about generational healing. Once you have your all your stuff lined up and... Um, Hopefully get some clients to you. I know there's a lot of people out here that, that really want that type of help and, and work. Um, so I think you're going to do phenomenal at it. Yeah, I would love that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, you know what to do. Follow, like, comment, share. Because of you, uh, this thing's able to continue. So um, if you want to, you can buy a hoodie, a shirt on the website, allrock.com, A-L-L-R-A-W-K.com. Instagram at Dre Rocka, D-R-E-R-A-W-K-A. Bree, thank you for coming. Thank you. Have the day you deserve. Always protect your light. We out. Peace. <laughs>